Well, who had Grice against Brian Elliott in this game? I wasn't say I wasn't <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Didn't see that coming. But okay, so the Islanders won. But if you think this was on Elliott, um, I would challenge that. <clears throat> First period, Islanders outshoot the Flyers eighteen to seven. I believe it was no goals scored. Go to the second period, and the uh, Islanders get on the board first. Now, the shot was, I mean, it's one of those deals where I guess you could argue, well, he had Elliot had a clean look at it, so he should have stopped it. Maybe it was a shot from the slot, and uh, the Islanders player, though there was a Philly player with his stick down in front of the shot to try to, you know, stop it. Other than that, the Islanders player was pretty much completely unmolested, and he puts it top shelf over Brian Elliott's blocker. I'm not saying Elliott couldn't have stopped that, but it was a really good shot. It would have been hard to stop. Um, the Flyers come back and tie it with a shot past Grice that uh, was a long shot, and I think it was screen. It might have even been deflected. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was one of those ones. I remember when I watched it and I saw the replay of it, I did not think you know, shame on Grice. So anyway, at that point, it's one-to-one. -one. Now, in that second period, the fly that, that those two goals were scored in, the Flyers outshot the Islanders 17-3. to It's fascinating in hockey how oftentimes that happens, how in one period, one team will totally dominate, and then you flip the script, and in the second period, it's the other way around. But in that 18-7, to Islanders uh, out shooting the Flyers first period, there were no goals, Second period where you have that 17 to three shot differential in favor of Philadelphia. You have two goals, one on each side. So we go to the third period and then the Islanders get the next two goals. So Pajot scores the first one. It's, uh, I wouldn't call it a breakaway, but he definitely had the lead on any Flyers player. He shoots and it hits off of, uh, Elliot's pads, I believe, but Elliot kind of falls over backward on his backside and the puck trickles in. The next Islanders goal is a really nice two-on-one breakaway, more or less, where the eventual goal scorer passes it over and then gets the puck back and is able to score uh, on Elliott's blocker side. Just a really, a really nice goal. Really, both Islanders goals there in third were uh, good goals. Then we fast forward a little bit to the toward the end of the game. Philly pulls their goaltender. If Philly had come back and and tied this game and sent it into overtime, I think the Islanders would have had Barry Trotz would have had to have been pretty mad about it at his team about the way they played late in the third when Philly had their goalie pulled because there were a couple opportunities in my opinion where the Islanders had an easy out. They could have gotten that puck out and gotten it out relatively easy easily. Maybe they would have iced it. Maybe not, but they had some chances and they failed to capitalize on those chances to get the puck out of the zone. And it ended up in the back of their own net because of it. It was not a bad goal at all by Grice. There wasn't really anything that he could have done, but uh, it was a situation where I think the Islanders could have done more, even though I know you could argue, yeah, Philly had an extra player on the ice. I mean, in the offensive zone, Islanders should have gotten that puck out. If I'm watching that tape, if you want to call it a tape, I know they probably don't use tape anymore. But if I'm Barry Trotz and I'm watching that tape with my players, I'm saying, look, guys, you could have gotten it out here. You could have gotten it out here. And you should have gotten it out in those situations. And and Philly doesn't get that second goal, potentially, anyway, if you get it out of the zone. But no harm, no foul. The Islanders hang on. They don't allow the third goal. Uh, and Philadelphia is now down Three games to one, man. Uh, things I did not see coming. Grice playing Elliot against Elliot tonight. Uh, did not see that. And the Islanders being up three to one. Again, if you're a New York Islanders fan, please hear me out. The Islanders are an excellent team. And I knew they were an excellent team going into this series. But I thought Philadelphia was just superlative. I thought Philadelphia was unstoppable. I was wrong, or so it would appear. Um, it does, you know... A, Again, could the could the Flyers come back and win this series? Absolutely. But being down three to one against a team in the Islanders that looks really good, it, it's not likely. You know, it's it's pretty scary if you're a Flyers fan. You got to be holding on to only a sliver of hope at best. Uh, but anything can happen. So I thought the Flyers were pretty well unbeatable. I was wrong. I knew the Islanders were good. Didn't think they were this good. 
But I will say this, and this is what stinks for me, is that of all the teams left in the postseason, the Flyers and the and the Islanders are, are my two favorite of the teams remaining, the Flyers being one of my most favorite teams, and the Islanders being a team that I really like a lot. So this stinks because one of them has to be gone. But it's looking very likely that we'll have an Islanders and Lightning matchup, which will be an excellent matchup. I'll be uh, I'll be really eager to watch those games. Uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching. Do please subscribe if you have not all already subscribed. I would really appreciate it if you would. And please click the like button also if you found this video to be informational, entertaining, or useful in any way. Thank you for watching and have an awesome night. Bye now.